Hey guys, Danielle at Danielle TBD. Marissa at Marissa Rothman. And this is We Have Thoughts, our vodcast. We're finishing up with fall TV previews with Wee the CW. Wee now, the CW I think is interesting because they only have two fall offerings. And I'm going to be really honest and say, like, typically with these fall preview vodcasts, we pick the one that we're really excited about and we, we talk about why. And I kind of can't pick between them because I see value in both of them and I plan to watch both of them to a few more episodes to see where they go. AKA she's cheating. I know I am cheating but it's I mean it's one of those things where you know on paper Jane the Virgin is the show that is much more for me because to go back to what I said about it earlier uh, in an earlier podcast it's about a real person and <laughs> I've just kind of hit my wall with superhero shows but or not even superhero, but like genre shows. But I think the Flash kind of snuck in a little bit under the rate, not under that, under that cutoff because it technically got introduced last year. So I'm like, oh, here's the thing. Like, but but yeah, in, I, I get like, it. You like got my mind, around. yeah, I got invested in in the character and the world, and I really like a lot of the cast. Like, I, yeah. I mean, that's honestly, yeah. I mean, to me, I will watch a show for an actor even if the show is terrible. I won't name a few right now, but there have been quite a few CW shows where that has been the case. <laughs> so, and not just CW, but we're talking about CW. So anyway, um, so it's it's weird. It's it's They're very different shows. I mean, Jane the Virgin is a comedy that's based on a telenovela that actually incorporates elements of the telenovela into the show, both in the main storyline of a girl getting artificially inseminated when she's a virgin that's crazy enough but then the fact that she has grown up with telenovelas and they we see scenes from the one that she watches and then she imagines the characters in her lives and so it's it's got a lot of layers um and you know stylistically i think it's it's pretty interesting and i think gina is going to be a big star former happy endings guest star go you guys um i'm really invested in happy endings i still miss it no, um, I know you could, but, yeah, okay. Anyway, um, so so head. there's a lot of things there. And then The Flash, obviously, coming from the team that it comes from, I have a lot of high hopes because I know what they can do and I know what they did with Arrow that I really liked. I will say that I'm not as invested in The Flash as I was in Arrow, simply because Arrow, to me, felt like it was more about a, an actual person that could that could be living right now, whereas The Flash, it's superhero powers because you got hit by lightning. That's just the story. And, and I'm just not as in love with that story as I am with other things. So I don't know. I mean, I, I, it's, it's hard to pick between them, which is a weird thing to say because typically if you are interested in one of those, you, the other one isn't necessarily for you. Like most people don't, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like not a lot of people have really end of the spectrum eclectic taste. Um, but I've been trained to partially because of when you have to watch everything, sometimes, you know, you just, you gravitate towards weird things, something from over here, something from over there, and you, and you mix it up. Um, so I don't know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch more of both of them, and maybe midway through the season, I'll have more of a definitive answer about which one I like more. I think right now it's hard.